This is one math lesson that will have you stretching, shifting, and flipping like a professional gymnast. We'll review the transformations of functions and what these transformations look like graphically and algebraically. You'll be a pro in no time. Let's start with the basic function f of x equals x cubed. How do we shift the function to the right by two? Well, we'd subtract two from every x value, making sure to put parentheses around the x minus two. The shifted function would be f of the quantity x minus two, and the new equation would be x minus two quantity cubed. And what if we wanted to shift the function to the left? We'd add two to every x value. Algebraically, if we substitute x plus two in place of x, and remember to use parentheses, we find that the new function would be x plus two quantity cubed. The graph shows this shift. Now, in order to shift a function upward by two, we'd add two to every y value. Algebraically, that would be adding two to the function outside of the parentheses. We just add two to the original function to get the new function, x cubed plus two. Since f of x is y, notice that the y values have been increased by two, and this shifts the function up by two. And if we wanted the function to shift down two, we'd do the opposite and subtract two from every y value. Notice that the y values have been reduced by two, and this shifts the function down by two. Are you feeling like a gymnast yet? So far, we've shifted graphs up and down, left and right. The ACT can also ask us to reflect a graph over the x or y axis. How do we reflect functions over the y axis? We replace every x with negative x. In our example, f of x equals x cubed, we can reflect the function over the y axis by replacing x with negative x. So the new reflected function would be negative x quantity cubed. This has the effect of reflecting the function around the y axis. And what about reflecting the function over the x axis? To do that, we'll just multiply every y value by negative one. In the example f of x equals x cubed, we can algebraically reflect the function over the x axis by multiplying the entire function by negative one to get the new function, negative x cubed. This makes every y value negative and reflects the function over the x axis. We can manipulate the graph in other ways too. For example, we can stretch or compress the graph horizontally by adjusting the coefficient in front of the x. To compress the function horizontally, we can multiply the x values by a number bigger than one. To stretch the function horizontally, we can multiply the x values by a number between zero and one, like one half. This will have the effect of stretching the function outward horizontally. As we make the fraction smaller, the graph will stretch even more. Multiplying the values of x by 1 fourth, the graph gets even wider. Lastly, what about stretching or shrinking the graph vertically? What if our gymnast decides to play basketball? Algebraically, multiplying the whole function by a number bigger than one will have the effect of stretching the function vertically. For example, if we multiplied this entire function by two, we'd get two x cubed and multiplying the function by a number between zero and one will have the effect of shrinking the function vertically. In our example, multiplying this function by one half will result in one half x cubed. So how do these rules help us with ACT questions that involve transforming functions? And what do those problems look like? Let's try one. Given the graph of g of x shown, which of the following graphs is of the function negative g of x? From our review of transforming functions, remember that multiplying the whole function by negative one makes every y value negative and has the effect of flipping the function over the x-axis. Notice that since the vertex of the parabola is three coordinate points away from the x-axis, the vertex of the new reflected parabola will also be a distance of three coordinate points below the x-axis. Let's look at the answers and start eliminating unrealistic choices. First, we'll draw the original graph on each to help us visualize. We can easily eliminate choice A since it's reflected over the y-axis, not the x-axis. Notice that choice D didn't reflect the function over the x-axis. Instead, the parabola was reflected over the line y equals three. So choice D can also be eliminated. Among other errors, choices B and C are on the wrong side of the y-axis, so let's eliminate them. That leaves us with choice E. That's the correct answer. Here's a round of applause for getting through that problem. All right, let's do a quick review. 
If we look for a pattern in the transformations of functions, we'll notice that changes inside of the parentheses affect the x values of the function and shift the function horizontally. However, changing the x value seems to have a counterintuitive effect. Subtracting 2 inside the parentheses shifts the function to the right by 2. And adding 2 inside the parentheses shifts the function to the left by 2. Multiplying the x's by 2 compresses the function horizontally, while multiplying the x's by 1 half stretches the function horizontally. The changes outside of the parentheses affect the y values and shift the function vertically. It's interesting that these changes affect the function in the way we would expect. Adding 2 to the function outside of the parentheses shifts the function up by 2. Subtracting 2 from the function outside of the parentheses shifts the function down by 2. And multiplying f of x by 2 has the effect of stretching the function vertically, whereas multiplying f of x by 1 half has the effect of shrinking the function vertically. That's it. If you remember those four rules, you'll be well on your way to tackling the problems of transforming functions. Try making flashcards to keep it fresh on your mind, and better yet, get to practicing.